Hey y'all, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that connects you with the best movies to stream, and today we're talking about 11 of the most underrated fantasy movies of all time. So unlike usual on this channel, I did not go with a particular streaming service. Instead, I'm gonna talk about 10 of the most underrated fantasy genre movies ever made, regardless of which streaming service they're on. As usual though, the full list of all the movies discussed in this video can be found in the top pinned comment down below, along with where you can currently stream them. But don't worry, if some of these movies are not available where you are right now, they likely will be again sometime in the future, so stay tuned. This video is sponsored by Magic Spoon and I'll be telling you more about their delicious stuff later in the video but right now I want to start all the way at the back at number 11 on this list of movies with a fairly recent release that can currently be found on HBO Max in most regions. With its unique body sharing technology you was able to draw out a user's hidden strength. I can finally sing again. Now, if you are not into anime, stay tuned because this is a movie you could definitely watch not just by yourself, but potentially with your kids. While this movie is not necessarily made for young audiences, it is fairly appropriate as this is essentially a futuristic retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Now, it does not follow the plot lines of Beauty and the Beast perfectly, but it is close and it largely takes place in this futuristic virtual reality world, which is basically on the horizon for us right now. So that alone made this movie way more interesting. It also comes from Japan and it features classic anime style, but it's actually the perfect way to tell this particular story because all the different characters in this virtual reality world are all wildly different from each other. Not only that though, but the music is pretty exceptional here as well. And the connection to Beauty and the Beast will be very obvious, but again, it's not on the nose, which makes Belle a lot more interesting than just another remake. Now I know the name Vin Diesel does not necessarily come to mind when you think about fantasy movies, and it certainly doesn't come to mind when you think about some of the most underrated ones ever made, but I'll stand by my statement that The Last Witch Hunter is easily one of his most underrated movies. You're a dreamwalker. Get out. I need you to take me to the dream world. It's the only way to fight what's coming. Rose Leslie from Game of Thrones also stars in this, along with Elijah Wood. And I will say that the PG-13 rating does hold this one back a little bit. It would have been cooler with an R rating. And it's got sort of the Matrix elements in it in terms of its production design. So nothing really original there, but the fantasy elements here are quite original and they are pretty damn interesting for a PG-13 Vin Diesel action movie. In that category, The Last Witch Hunter punches way above its weight. It is filled with mindless action, but again, the fantasy elements, including some of the visuals in this movie, are absolutely stunning, especially considering, again, I'm gonna say it again, this is a Vin Diesel PG-13 action movie that largely went unnoticed, and I can understand why so many of those movies movies are all the same, but The Last Witch Hunter really does stand out in his filmography as one of the better options and certainly one of the more underrated ones. Now my next pick on this list is another family friendly recommendation, but hang with me, don't skip ahead. I know some of you like to skip these family movies because this is one that you could watch by yourself with or without kids and be thoroughly entertained. In fact, I did not even consider it when making this list, but David Lowery, the director of Peach Dragon, did another movie featured higher on this list, so he's got a great eye for fantasy, even if most people didn't really notice back when these movies came out. But Pete's Dragon is a Disney production and is obviously a remake of the 1977 classic, which featured this big animated dragon. The new version, though, plays things fairly realistic in a way that I would not have expected. And this movie will pull at your heartstrings way more than you would expect it to. It's about a young boy lost out in the woods that is essentially raised by this dragon. And again, everything feels way more grounded and realistic than you would normally expect from a movie like this, especially from a family-friendly one. This particular movie does not ever go into that Harry and the Hendersons direction. As much as I like that direction in that movie and other movies like it, Peach Dragon deals with more serious themes. It does have some really stunning visuals of this boy flying around on this big, beautiful, furry green dragon. 
but the themes that it plays with are all heavier almost too heavy for really young kids. This movie can get pretty intense for young kids, but I'm telling you, if you never bothered to watch this one, this is a total gem of a fantasy movie from a really competent director. Speaking of competent directors, legendary director Terry Gilliam makes this list with one of his more underrated movies, Time Bandits. Now this one is a cult classic, it does have a cult following, but modern audiences I don't think have embraced this the way that they could and maybe should. Released in 1981, this movie is 40 years old, but it's got a solid 80s vibe, and I would put this on par with movies like Labyrinth and The Never Ending Story, but it's not really in the zeitgeist. It is not a culturally significant movie the way that those are. At least it's not still, and it really should be. This movie's got some amazing visual effects in it that are all practical, they're all in camera, and they look absolutely amazing. Terry Gilliam just has this incredible eye for fantasy. Most of his movies have this fantastical element if they're not pure fantasy movies. Time Bandits is, though, you follow a young boy that joins this band of dwarves that are hopping around, that are hopping around in different time periods looting treasure. So you get all these amazing different sequences and scenes with famous actors in them too. I mean, John Cleese, Sean Connery, Shelley Duvall, all in this wild fantasy movie with all sorts of different concepts mashed up into one movie. If you love those 80s fantasy movies and it's been a while since you've seen this one or you've never seen it, make it one that you watch soon because I guarantee you, you're gonna like it every bit as much as those other movies I mentioned like Labyrinth and The Never Ending Story. Now my next pick is far and away the saddest movie on this list without a doubt, but it features this incredible fantasy element that helps support the main story at hand here. I'm talking about A Monster Calls. From monster. Now, this is based on a book by the same name, and in this story you follow a young boy who begins to see this giant monster come out of the earth that begins to talk to him. Liam Neeson voices the monster, and Felicity Jones plays the boy's mother, who is dying of cancer. So that's kind of the crux of the movie and the reason this boy is inventing this monster. However, all of the fantasy sequences are absolutely stunning in this movie, and what's so cool about them in the fantasy element, even though it's all in this boy's head, is it really is helping him cope with his current situation. And it's just a beautiful story that's really brought to life uh, by this CGI monster that works so much better than you would expect it to. David Lowry, the director of Pete's Dragon, has another movie featured on this list, and it's one of the newer releases on this list, The Green Knight. Now this is one where I can understand why it was underrated because it's still fresh. It only just came out recently and there are a lot of people that just recently watched it and did not like this movie and I can understand why. But hang with me because this is one of the most beautifully directed medieval era fantasy movies I've ever seen. And this is based on a classic medieval tale of the Green Knight, which is a fable, there is a lesson here. And what I think maybe turned people off to this movie is the ending. This is not a movie where you're left fulfilled at the end. If anything, you're gonna be scratching your head, which I do like if there's enough meat on the bone, and I think that there is with the Green Knight. I think they give you enough information to ultimately understand the moral here at the end of the story, even if you don't understand it as soon as the credits roll. This is a movie you can ponder for hours, if not days, after initially viewing it, and I recommend that you do that because it does deal with some heavy themes. But aside from all the thinky stuff that you can do after the movie, the experience of watching it is this beautiful fantasy movie that feels raw and real. It feels almost as if it actually happened and 
somebody captured it on camera rather than this big, beautiful, glowing, epic thing like Lord of the Rings or something. I loved the production design on this. To boot, you've got amazing performances and again, just a really sharp director that threaded the needle on this thing, even if it doesn't quite work for you on the initial viewing. Now, before moving on with the rest of the movies on this list, I do want to tell you about today's sponsor, Magic Spoon, because it's one of my favorite ways to treat myself. And what's so great about Magic Spoon is it is a guilt-free treat. That's because Magic Spoon is a nostalgic, sweet, familiar tasting cereal that has zero grams of sugar, a whopping 13 grams of protein and only four net carbs per serving, making it a fantastic high protein no sugar snack that is also gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free. I have spent about the last year and a half packing on more muscle than I've ever had in my life, and to do that, I need a high-protein diet, and I can only eat so much meat and greens during the day. Magic Spoon not only tastes delicious, but it is a wonderful reprieve from protein shakes. I like a good protein shake, but eating a sweet, nostalgic cereal in place of a protein shake late at night sometimes Times that's guilt-free, it's really hard to beat. And right now when my viewers go to the link in the video description below, or you can just go to magicspoon.com and use the code FLICK at checkout and you'll save $5 off your order. If you're trying to cut out sugar but you still get sweet cravings from time to time, like all of us, Magic Spoon is a great thing to keep in the cabinet. Again, go to the link in the description or use the code FLICK and you're gonna save $5 off your first order with Magic Spoon. It's fantastic stuff. But speaking of fantastic stuff, let's go ahead and move on with the rest of the movies on this list. Okay, my next pick on this list is from Disney. It's animated, and it's one of their most controversial animated movies of all time, The Black Cauldron. There once was a spirit so cruel that it was imprisoned forever in the form of a great black cauldron. Now this movie is currently included with Disney Plus, and when Disney Plus first launched, it was the first time you could actually see this movie in almost forever. This is a movie that Disney is kind of ashamed of and has never really released onto the market until now. In fact, this movie was being completed just as Michael Eisner was coming into Disney and revamping everything. Shortly after he started, that's when they had their renaissance, where they came out with The Little Mermaid, The Lion King, all the movies that everybody really loves. The Black Cauldron is what Disney was working on before all of that happened. It is far and away the darkest movie that they ever made. In fact, it is so dark, it's bizarre to see it done in this Disney animation style. And the animation style is a little bit haphazard. It's a little bit sloppy compared to what you would see Disney create just years after this. So all of that makes this an interesting movie to watch, if nothing else, but it is actually a pretty cool fantasy movie with some incredibly dark elements. Metalheads, I'm telling you, if you love metal and you've never seen The Black Cauldron, it will easily be your favorite animated movie of all time, hands down, there's no question. If nothing else, it's one of the cooler, edgier things Disney has ever made. My next pick is another highly underrated fantasy movie from 1981, and it also features incredible practical effects in Dragon Slayer. Now this is a classic David and Goliath story where this young boy is sent off to fight this gigantic dragon. But it's got this grungy, dirty, medieval times kind of look to it that feels a little bit authentic, even if it is a little dated. And being practically 40 years old, there are shots of the dragon that look like stop motion animation, because they are, but there are also incredible scenes and sequences with this gigantic practical dragon that look absolutely incredible. And the story at the core here is top notch stuff. I mean, you go on the adventure with this guy, this really undermatched fellow, and it's a wild fun ride. If you've never seen it and you clicked on this video to check out some cool fantasy stuff you've never seen, Dragon Slayer is a fantastic place to start, and I often find it available on streaming services. It hops around. Again, all of the movies I talk about in this video, you can find them in the top pinned comment, along with the best options for watching them at the time of me posting this video. 
Okay, my number three pick is my last family-friendly one on this list, but it's one of my personal favorites in this genre. And then my top two on this list are just killer hidden gem movies you're gonna wanna watch, but Matilda is a beautiful fantasy movie for kids. Matilda already knew that she was somewhat different from her family. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. Had they paid any attention to her at all, they'd have realized she was a rather extraordinary child. This stars and was directed by Danny DeVito, who I consider to be a highly underrated director. He's done a handful of movies that are all amazing. This is one of his best, believe it or not. This movie is about a young girl who develops telekinetic powers, and she's really shunned by her family and then ends up developing a relationship with her teacher. All of that sounds really dry, and the telekinetic power she develops, they really don't come into play until about halfway through the movie. All of that said though, everything else that happens is so visually interesting. The way Danny DeVito depicted her life with these horrible parents who only ever watch TV, and he plays her dad, who's this dirty, cheating car salesman, and it's done with this beautiful, fantastical style that is just a marvel to watch. And then once the girl starts getting powers, the movie really goes into this amazing direction that you almost don't see coming, and it's full of heart, it's got these wonderful moments in it, and a lot of humor too. This is a really fun movie to watch with kids, but there's a frightening, and I mean terrifying, principal at the school. So for really young kids, this movie could be a little bit intense, but for stuff in this genre, this movie is top notch. It holds up after years and years, decades. And now, it's still a really fun movie to watch with or without kids. That said, my number two pick is kind of the reason I made this list. It is this fantasy movie that's got some of the most incredible visuals ever put to film. I'm talking Christopher Nolan mixed with Salvador Dali kind of stuff. It's wild. It's really cool and it's really hard to find. It's called The Fall. I'll tell you a story. Close your eyes. This is from director Tarsem Singh, whose previous movie was The Cell, starring Jennifer Lopez. This movie has incredible visuals just like The Cell, but there's somehow more of them. And the setup for this movie is that a man who's in a hospital begins to tell a young girl this fantastical story, but most of the movie actually takes place in his story. This movie features some incredible sets, locations, some of the most stunning costumes you will ever see put to film, and it was largely panned by critics as it was seen as more of a vanity project, and while they didn't give it horrible ratings, a lot of critics didn't really like it on an initial viewing, which is kind of the flaw with film criticism, right? People watch a movie once and they tell you whether it's good or whether it's not. The Fall is a wild viewing experience. Even if you don't really tap into the story that much, you'll almost be too distracted to follow the story, but even if you don't like the story, which I consider to be fairly good here, the way it's told is better than anything else on this list and better than almost any fantasy movie you could ever put your hands on, making it one of the most underrated movies of all time, in my opinion. This is one I don't know that I've ever talked about on the channel before because I almost never see it available on streaming anywhere. Again, I'll let you know in that top pin comment if I've been able to find it anywhere. If you happen to find any of these movies anywhere, be sure to let the rest of us know in that comment section below because we will use them. Now, let's move on to my number one pick on this list. One that does have a cult following. Some of you probably even forgot is technically a fantasy movie. Dark City. Fredrickson says he'll take me off the damn night shift soon. Well, it's about time, dear. This is from the same director as the original The Crow. I think this is easily his best movie. Dark City is a puzzle of a movie that you can enjoy trying to figure out along the way, or you can just have your mind blown later on in the movie. 
but it also features an incredible production design, this dark, grungy look. When you do watch it, keep in mind this came out a year before The Matrix, and a lot of the aesthetic choices here go hand in hand with The Matrix, yet they're somehow darker and creepier. This movie's got a horror element to it, yet it's not a horror movie and it's not quite sci-fi. And what's so cool about Dark City and why it gets the number one rating on this list is even though the costume design is amazing, the production design, the setting, the twists that this movie holds, all of that stuff is top notch. It's all incredible. But the story underneath is really fantastic too. I mean, it's the best one on this particular list and even though this movie does have a cult following and isn't completely unknown like some of the other choices I picked out here, it still is wildly underrated and underappreciated. And I'll even say for a movie with a lot of twists, Dark City is highly rewatchable. So even if you have seen it and it's been a while, I can guarantee you, you've forgotten how good it is and you probably also forgot a lot of the twists and turns in Dark City. But that is the list. If you got any additional recommendations, let us know in the comments down below. I, for one, will be reading them and maybe one of your recommendations will show up on a future video. You can also go over to darrenvandam.com if you want additional movie recommendations. Thanks again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring another video. There's a link to that in the description below. But I will keep making these lists as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special fantasy episode and you will see me on the next one.